Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell. We are starting Chapter 5 today on integers, starting with Section 5.1, Addition and Subtraction of Integers. We'll talk about the meaning of integers and their representation on a number line, models for addition and subtraction of integers, and properties of addition and subtraction of integers. The set of integers is denoted by i. Notice that it includes all the whole numbers and their opposites, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, etc. The negative integers are opposites of the positive integers. For example, negative 4 is the opposite of positive 4, and 3 is the opposite of negative 3. Very easy example to start with. For each of the following integers, find the opposite. So of course, the opposite of three is negative three. The opposite of negative five is five. And zero is its own opposite. The absolute value of a number a, which is written like this with these straight line brackets, is the distance on the number line from zero to a. So in this example, we're looking at the distance from zero to four, which would be the absolute value of four, and the distance between zero and negative four, which would be the absolute value of negative four. Notice that since both of those distances are four, that means the absolute value of four is four, and the absolute value of negative four is four. Notice that absolute value is always positive or zero. It is never negative. All right, this is kind of a more, sort of more formal definition of absolute value. For any integer x, the absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to zero. In other words, if x is positive or zero, then, then uh, the absolute value of x is just x. The number doesn't change. However, if x is negative, then the absolute value of x is the opposite of x, okay? This is kind of a confusing definition to a lot of people. Uh, and I think part of the reason is that we use this symbol right here to mean three different things, right? We use it to mean negative, opposite, and also subtraction. I noticed that they're trying to write it a little bit differently when it stands for uh, negative or opposite. They're kind of raising it up, uh, which is also how a lot of calculators do it. All right, evaluate each of the following expressions and try to think of absolute value as distance. That's really the best way to think about it. So for example, the absolute value of 20 is the distance between 0 and 20 on the number line. So that would be 20. The absolute value of negative 5 is the distance between 0 and negative 5 on the number line. That distance is 5. The absolute value of 0 is 0 because the distance from 0 to 0 is 0. Now this next one's a little different. It's saying the absolute value of x is equal to three, and they wanna know what x is. So x is a mystery number whose distance from zero is three. So there are two numbers like that, right? Three and negative three. Both of those numbers are three units away from zero. And then finally, we have the absolute value of x plus negative five is equal to one. <clears throat> So we'll start off by simplifying that the way we did uh, this one here. If the absolute value of this thing is equal to one, then this expression has to be one or negative one. So we have x plus negative five equals one. The solution to that equation is six. And we have x plus negative five equals negative one. The solution of that equation is four. Integer addition chip models. In the chip model, 
positive integers are represented by yellow chips and negative integers by red chips. One red chip neutralizes one yellow chip or makes a zero pair. The integer negative one, for example, can be represented by one red chip or two red and one yellow because one red and one yellow would cancel each other out and leave one red or three red and two yellow and so on. So here are some pictures. Uh, up here you have four different representations of the number two using chips. The simplest one is two yellow chips. Another one is three yellow and one red. Imagine these two canceling each other out. Another one is four yellow and two red. Imagine these cancel and these cancel and just leave these two and so on and so on. You can keep adding one red and one yellow. For negative two, it's very similar. You start off with two red chips and then if you add one red and one yellow, it still represents negative two because the red and the yellow cancel each other out. The number line model. Integers can be represented on a number line. We use a cat to walk the number line. Different textbooks use different objects to walk the number line. Many classrooms have a number line on the floor for their students to walk the number line to represent whole numbers and integers. Here are the rules for walking a number line. Always start at zero and always face the positive direction. If the number is positive, walk forward. If the number is negative, walk backward. Here are some pictures of that. So representation of the number four is the cat walks forward from zero to four. Representation of the number negative six is the cat walks backwards from zero to negative six. Walks backwards six units. Some other models, for example, the charged field model is similar to the chip model. Positive integers are represented by pluses and negative integers by minuses. Positive charges neutralize negative charges. So here's an illustration of three plus negative five equals negative two. You have the three pluses and the five minuses. Imagine that this and this and this cancel each other out and just leave you the two minuses. So that's an illustration of why three plus negative five is negative two. All right, another example. The temperature was negative four degrees Celsius. In an hour, it rose 10 degrees Celsius. What is the new temperature? So here is my thermometer th uh, showing negative four degrees Celsius. To illustrate the rise 10 degrees, I'm going to move up the number line by 10 and I land at six. So that's an illustration of why negative four plus 10 is equal to six. So the new temperature is six degrees Celsius. Okay, the pattern model for integer addition. Beginning with whole number facts, a table of computations is created by following a pattern. So for example, four plus three equals seven, four plus two equals six, four plus one equals five, and four plus zero equals four. Continuing that pattern, it stands to reason that four plus negative one should be three, four plus negative two should be two, four plus negative three should be one, et cetera, et cetera. So each time this number drops down by one, the sum drops down by one. So that pattern should continue. If we drop zero down to negative one, the sum should be three. The definition of addition of integers. Let m and n be any integers. So first of all, if m is any integer, then zero plus m and m plus zero are both equal to m. If m and n are both greater than or equal to zero, then uh, that means that m and n are whole numbers. So we already know how to do that. 
if m and n are both greater than or equal to zero, then negative m plus negative n is equal to the opposite of m plus n. So for example, negative four plus negative three should be negative seven. Okay, now here's where these rules start to get a little complicated. I definitely would not recommend uh, teaching it this way, right? If n is greater than zero and m is greater than or equal to n, then m plus negative n is the same thing as negative n plus m. That would just be m minus n. So for example, eight plus negative two is the same thing as eight minus two. See, it always makes more sense when you look at an example. If n is greater than m, and m is greater than or equal to zero, then m plus negative n is the same thing as negative n plus m, which is the opposite of n minus m. So for example, two plus negative five should be the opposite of five minus two. It comes out to negative three. All right, definition of integer addition using absolute values. And again, I would not recommend teaching it using this. <clears throat> Let M and N be any integers. If M is any integer, then M plus zero and zero plus M are both equal to M. If M and N are non-negative integers, then M plus N is the sum of the whole numbers M and N. So we already know how that works. <clears throat> if M and N are both negative, then M plus N is equal to the opposite of the sum of the absolute values of M and N, all right? Uh, negative two plus negative six is the opposite of two plus six, for example. If M is positive and N is negative, then m plus n is defined as follows. If the absolute value of m is greater than or equal to the absolute value of n, then m plus n and n plus m are both equal to the absolute value of m minus the absolute value of n. And if the absolute value of m is less than the absolute value of n, then m plus n and n plus m are both equal to the opposite of the absolute value of n minus the absolute value of m. And we will probably never use that definition again. <laughs> properties of integer addition. Integer addition has all the properties of whole number addition. For example, closure. If a, b, and c are integers, then a plus b is a unique integer. A plus B is equal to B plus A. Addition is commutative. And addition of integers is also associative. Zero is the unique integer such that for all integers A, zero plus A and A plus zero are both equal to A, just like with whole numbers. Zero is also a whole number. And this is something that we didn't have with whole numbers. We did not have additive inverses. For every integer a, there exists a unique integer opposite of a, which is also called the additive inverse of a, such that a plus the opposite of a is equal to zero. All right, next we have Ah, theorem, all right. Let's see, let A, B, and C be any integers. First of all, the opposite of the opposite of A is just A. For example, the opposite of negative eight is eight. The addition property of equality for integers. So this is how we solve a lot of equations in algebra. If A equals B, then a plus c is equal to b plus c. You're allowed to add the number c to both sides of an equation. The opposite of a plus the opposite of b is equal to the opposite of a plus b. 
All right, so as an example, we're going to find the additive inverse of each of the following expressions. This one is pretty simple because the opposite sign is outside the parentheses. Remember, additive inverse means the same thing as opposite. So the easiest way to get the opposite of this is to just knock off the opposite sign. The additive inverse of opposite 3 plus x is just 3 plus x. All right, the additive inverse of a plus negative 4, here's how that's going to work. We're going to put an opposite sign outside the expression a plus negative 4. Notice we need parentheses. And then using, let's see, which part of the theorem was it? I believe it's letter C. That becomes opposite A plus 4. So it just changes the sign of all the terms in the expression. And then uh, kind of similar, negative 3 plus the opposite of x, the additive inverse of that is going to be 3 plus x. So you just change the sign of both of these. The chip model for subtraction. Students get really confused the first time they hear, for example, 3 minus negative 2 equals 5. All right. So uh, here's one way to make that make sense. To find 3 minus negative 2, add 0 in the form 2 plus negative 2. In other words, two black chips, actually they are yellow chips, two yellow chips and two red chips, and then take away the two red chips. So here's a representation of 3. This is also a representation of 3 because these four chips here cancel each other out, so it doesn't change the value. And now I can take away negative 2 by removing the two red chips. That leaves me with five yellow chips. The number line model. Here are the rules for walking the number line when subtraction is involved. Always start at 0, facing the positive direction. If the number is positive, walk forward. If the number is negative, walk backward. And if you happen to be doing subtraction, then before you walk forward or walk backward, turn around, okay? <clears throat> subtraction is modeled by turning around and facing in the negative direction. We can also use the pattern model for subtraction using inductive reasoning and starting with known subtraction facts Find the difference of two integers by following a pattern. For example, we already know that 3 minus 2 equals 1 and 3 minus 3 equals 0. So it stands to reason that every time we increase this number by 1, the difference will decrease by 1. For example, 3 minus 4 should be negative 1. 3 minus 5 should be negative 2. Uh, here's another example. We already know that 3 minus 2 equals 1 and 3 minus 1 equals 2. So every time we decrease this number, the difference should increase. <clears throat> so for example, 3 minus negative 1 should be 4. Definition of subtraction for all integers a and b a minus b is the unique integer n such that a equals b plus n. We did something like this when we did whole number subtraction. Uh, the answer to a subtraction problem is a mystery missing number in an addition problem. All right, using the definition of subtraction, 3 minus 10 should be a number that makes 10 plus n equal 3. And you can figure out that uh, that number has to be negative 7. Or negative 2 minus 10, that should be a number that makes 10 plus n equal negative 2. That missing number should be negative 12. Subtraction using adding the opposite approach. 
subtracting an integer is the same as adding its opposite. And when I teach pre-algebra, I use this all the time because once you learn your rules for adding signed numbers, then you don't have to learn another whole set of rules for subtracting signed numbers. You just change everything to an addition problem. For all integers a and b, a minus b is equal to a plus the opposite of b. Add the opposite. Use the fact that a minus b equals a plus the opposite of b to compute each of the following. 2 minus 8 is the same thing as 2 plus negative 8, which is negative 6. 2 minus negative 8 is the same thing as 2 plus 8, which is 10. Negative 12 minus negative 5 is the same thing as negative 12 plus 5, which is negative 7. And negative 12 minus 5 is the same thing as negative 12 plus negative 5, which is negative 17. Rewrite each expression without parentheses, starting with the opposite of b minus c. All right, and we're going to, uh, every time we see a subtraction, we're going to change it to add the opposite. <clears throat> so the opposite of b minus c should be the opposite of b plus opposite c. All right, so we're using the definition of subtraction as adding the opposite. And then using that theorem from earlier, changing the signs of both of these numbers, you get opposite b plus opposite of opposite of c, which is opposite b plus c, all right? So we're really showing every single step there. Next, we have a minus the sum of b and c. So we'll start by changing this minus to add the opposite. And then we will uh, knock down the parentheses here. The opposite of b plus c is the opposite of b plus the opposite of c. And then using the associative property, <clears throat> that's the same thing as a plus opposite b and then add opposite C. And in the end, you can just leave off the parentheses. All right, very similar example. This might be a good time to pause the video and try this one. <clears throat> Don't forget to change every subtraction to add the opposite. So two minus five minus X is the same thing as two plus the opposite of five plus opposite x. So we, we use the change subtraction to add the opposite twice there. And that's the same thing as two plus negative five plus opposite opposite x, which is two plus negative five plus x. And then adding the two and the negative five, we get negative three plus x, which is the same thing as x minus three. Very similar example right here. In fact, I don't think th this one's really, really similar. So I'll just bring it up and, uh, and let you look at it. All right, simplify this expression, the opposite of x minus y, and then subtract y. All right, so remember that x minus y means the same thing as x plus opposite y. So now we will uh, knock down these parentheses. The opposite of x plus opposite y should be opposite x plus opposite opposite y. And that's the same thing as opposite x plus y. And then outside you're adding opposite y. And then in the end, y plus opposite y uh, comes out to zero. So this thing ends up just being opposite x. Notice I'm saying opposite x instead of negative x. And I do that for a very specific reason. I have no idea whether x itself is positive or negative. Right? So I would rather say opposite of x 
the negative x because negative x sounds like it should be a negative number, but it's not necessarily. Recall that subtraction is neither commutative nor associative. An expression such as 3 minus 15 minus 8 is ambiguous unless we know in which order to perform the subtractions. Mathematicians agree that 3 minus 15 minus 8 means do 3 minus 15 first and then subtract 8. Subtractions are performed in order from left to right. Unless I had some parentheses around 15 minus 8, right? You always do what's in the parentheses first. All right, let's calculate each of these. 2 minus 5 minus 5. So first we'll do 2 minus 5, which is negative 3. And then negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. Here we have subtraction and addition thrown in together. <clears throat> subtraction and addition are done from left to right. So you don't do addition before subtraction necessarily. 3 minus 7 is negative 4, and then negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. However, here I am going to do this subtraction first. 7 minus 3 is 4, and then 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And that's going to do it for section 5.1. We'll see you next time.